you and I have a mutual friend who made a very significant announcement this week. Uh, Sven Berchi, first overall pay, or first round pick of the Calgary Flames back in, I believe, 2011. Um, yep. Had a, a nice career in the National Hockey League, a nice career as a pro. Um, I know that it's easy to look back and go what ifs and couldas and shouldas and all of that sort of stuff with Sven. Uh, but we wanted to take a, a moment, some opportunity today to just talk about the spend that maybe some people didn't see or didn't know. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you and I both know we get to see we get to see these NHL players be individuals and be humans and be kind people. And I'll tell you what, hockey is hockey is going to miss this young man. And uh, not many guys did it better than him. I got a lot of love for this. I call him a kid. I met him when he was 18, 30 <laughs> now. Yeah. I guess I'm 50, so he's still a kid. But I got a lot of love for his kid. I mean, I got his jersey right here, you know, from Switzerland. He's uh, I met him. I met him first day he turned up at Flames Development Camp, and uh, he did so many incredible things for our community. So many things for the community in Calgary, Vancouver, Portland, where he lives. Um, this this is this is the guy that we want all of our hockey players to grow up to be. And uh, ho hockey's going to miss him. They really are. Um, and and like so many great guys, nobody even really knows what he did. He did it quietly. He never did it for anybody else. He did it because of the right thing. And I think that's, you know, sometimes you got to pump the tires of the guys who want to hide in the background. And that's Fen. Let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, I, I can certainly uh, promote the fact that he was one of the first Flames players to come to our development camp for kids who never got to go to hockey schools. The ones that we put on, uh, you know, with all of our friends in the media and, and the hockey community volunteer camp that very, very proud of. And you were a huge part of. We had heroes kids at it. But Sven was one of the first players, uh, along with Michael Backlund, I believe Black, Backlund the first year, Berchi the second year, came and, and signed autographs and met and greeted, greeted the kids. So for their, I'm forever in debt for just that. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think sometimes you look at these guys and you see they're connected to charities and, and charities like ours, we're always trying to get connected to good people. Um, but it's not because of what they do on the ice. It's because of what we come to know off the ice. And I'll tell you, tell you a little story about when I first met Sven and why I fell in love with this kid. Um, outside of heroes, outside of, you know, my professional career, I had this very little part-time job where I worked as the very low man on the totem pole with the flames equipment staff. I was the helper to the helper, the assistant equipment guy. I was not an equipment guy, just a helper. And I did it because it was a break from social work and a, just a chance to do something different. So we're doing development camp up at Don Hartman there. And this new draft pick shows up and everybody had been talking about him and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And he goes on the ice and you remember those development camps and some guys are going all out. Some guys are going through the mode and it depends a bit if you've been there before and yep. all that stuff. Um, but there's this young kid, 18 years old, all out. I mean, I guess we're on a podcast. So I can say balls to the wall. I mean, absolutely. You can. Fully sorry. Invested. Ty. Yeah. Sorry, Ty, buddy. All in, like just given everything that he got ice time ends, the guys kind of trickle off. And then the coaches leave. One of the coaches says to me, said, we heard from Portland, this kid will stay on the ice until the rink guy yells at him. We're going to be here all week. We can't have the rink guy yelling. Your job is to get him off just before the rink guy yells. I'm like, Okay, so all these players leave. Sven goes, Sven's down at the far end of the rink, so he couldn't be farther from me. He knows what's going on. He knows I'm there to get him off the ice. And he's <laughs> working on stuff, right? Like edge work and puck, like all sorts of stuff. And on that first day, I'm like, what is he doing? Second day, I realized he's working on the stuff that hadn't gone well in the drills. Remember Clear's Day one time, Lance Boma stepped in front of him, knocked a puck out of midair and went the other way. So Sven is shooting pucks off the boards, and working on knocking them down, like this kind yep. of stuff. Yep. But the kid won't make eye contact with me because he knows if I we make eye contact, I'd tell him he's got to come off. So I start, he's work, he's down at the other end. So I start throwing pucks down. So I'm hoping it'll distract him and he'll break, he'll make eye contact. Then the rink guy looks over at me, he gives me one of these. So I know I got about five seconds before this guy. All of us that have been in rinks know what it yep. looks like. When, Absolutely. Well, the rink guy's good and then the rink guy's bad, right? <laughs> so Ben makes a mistake in eye contact and I wave him and I go, it's done, let's go. So he comes over and he goes, did somebody tell you to kick me off? And I said, your reputation precedes you, young man. I said, how about this? Whenever I rattle the gate, that means it's time to go. I'll give you all the time in the world. But when the gate gets rattled, you come off. And that's what we did the rest of the week. But I, what, what you fall in love with is the person who's devoted to his craft, but the coaches had left. The GMs left the suite. Nobody was watching them. You know, it's, it's that adage of winners, you know, winners yep. win 
when nobody's looking, they just go to the games to pick up the accolades, right? This was a kid who was dedicated to being the best that he could, not because anybody was watching, but because it was the right thing to do. And from that day forward, um, we, we just kind of, and Sven and I were talking the other day and he brought that story up. He still remembers that. But from that day forward, he has been a part of the heroes community and he has done things for kids that, that, you know, nobody knows. He does, we ask him for just come for a visit and he does so much more. He's mm -hmm. raised money. Like you, you could go on and on, but the, the mark of the character of that guy, and you know, one more, you know, I think shows the character of this guy. He's playing for Vancouver. He's here playing on a Saturday night. I'm at the airport Sunday morning and I go, I, I go through security and there's Sven sitting on the other side of security while they're looking through his bag. And he looks like he looks bad. He looks bad. So I go to him and I go, holy smokes, I didn't expect to see you here because the Canucks flew out, I would assume, after the Flames game. This was after I'd stopped working down there. And uh, he can't talk. He's He's got a jaw injury. His jaw, his jaw wasn't broken, but it was misaligned. It's like totally out of alignment. So like totally opposite sides of your mouth. It yep. looked gross, all that. He couldn't talk. And, I, and uh, I said, let's go have some breakfast. I had some lounge passes. We went in the lounge. And I watched him cut fruit in the little tiny pieces and drink yogurt through a straw. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I came to the airport early. I want to get on a flight and get home because the sooner I can get home and see the doctor, the sooner I might get cleared and I can get back to working out because I want to I want to be back with the boys. Easy thing to want to do would take his time, you know, and this yep. kid was was doing that. And he did everything that way. He did it all the right way. He did it all because of what it meant to other people. He did it all because he understood that he had these own personal values that were important to him. And, and you know, we're going to talk about volunteering. We're looking for people who live their values. We're looking for people who are genuine. You know, the world needs more people like that. And that is who that young man was from the day I met when he was 18. And I know it was like that when he was a porter mm -hmm. before. And to this day, yesterday, he goes, you know, I can still help out with heroes, you know. I actually have more time now. And I said, oh, we're not done with you. Like, he's he's trying to figure out how important he can help heroes kids in Canada get connected to the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not showing up at rinks across the country because that's just the guy he is. Do you mind telling the story about the hospital visit? Oh, yeah. So Vancouver. So he, by this time, he was playing in Vancouver. And we had this young man named Kane. And Kane's life up to this point was hard enough as it was. You could have made a movie about it. And then Kane was about 12, 13 years old. And out of the blue, he has a, he has a massive stroke. Um, and nobody could figure out what was going on. And, it, and it's, it's changed Kane's life to this day. Um, and he had met Sven before and Sven had read books with him. Like he had done all this big brother stuff, cousin, yep. you know, uncle stuff. Yep. Like, so we text Sven and just say, Hey, are you in Vancouver? Cause it was, I think it was, I think it was just before training camp and guys come back at different times or whatever. Or maybe it was end of season, whatever. Anyways, it was not a time he should have been in the city, but he was, we said, Kane had this stroke. He's in the hospital. It would sure mean a lot if you just pop by for a visit, but we prefaced him. He might not know who you are. Like, Mm -hmm. And we said, we're just looking 15, 20 minutes of your time spent. 12 hours later, he's still there. And he sat with a rolled up sock. It still gets me. A rolled up sock, they turned into a ball. And they played catch back and forth and for like 10 hours. And Sven yeah. talked to him the whole time. He brought jerseys. He brought pictures, like all this kind of stuff. And Kane wasn't really tuned in that this was Sven. But when he saw the pictures, he made the association that he knew this guy and, and Sven stayed. And then he said, I'll be back tomorrow. And he came back tomorrow. And then he said, I'll be back tomorrow. Like he came, yep. kept coming back and the nurses, you know, at the hospital knew who he was and they like, they realized really quickly, this wasn't a organized team visit. This was a young man doing right by another young. And Sven was in his what mid twenties then. Mm -hmm. And and he grasped it. And that was before he was a father, but you could see the father he was going to become from that moment. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it was, it was massive. It was one of those things that doctors say something happened. In this kid's recovery Sven's or, uh, Kane's not back to himself, but Kane things changed in his recovery for that. And it was because his buddy was there. Right. And unasked, like, just cause it was the right thing to do. Yeah. I, I, I will always have a special part, part or part in my heart for that kid. Uh, I'm not supposed to, like, I, I get it. And, and I'm not taking a shot. I, I, you know, Ryan Pike and the nation network guys have, have written posts about him and look at him from a hockey standpoint that that doesn't matter to me that kid's a winner like absolutely has always been a winner 
the easy thing is for guys like you and me to sit back and poke holes at how well guys play hockey. We mm. should be celebrating. You mean, yes. this is the, same with the women yes. hockey players, Absolutely. all these women pro players, these university players, whatever. Well, tell, I mean, okay, but talk about Emily Clark then and talk about what, what we delivered yesterday. I mean, in that same regard, because that's going to lead us right into what we're going to talk about. Right. So we, we met Emily Clark five, six years ago uh, when she was 18, 19 years old, the national team. And, and lots of times you have people say, Hey, like, I'd love to help out. Here's my contact information. And, and their intentions are good, but sometimes it's hard. You know, they move to a different city or they get mm -hmm. busier or they get a new relationship. So not everybody follows through. Emily followed through right from day one when she's like, you speak about a young person again, who gets it. Yep. And, and through the course of her time with us coming on the ice and doing stuff, COVID hits, we do a zoom call and she meets one of our, our players, Naya, who's a superheroes player up in Edmonton, lives with autism, and, and there's lots of challenges there for was us. Was not talking when she started with us, correct? Was 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 when we met her, she she um she fit that definition lots of people have of autism. That mm -hmm. you know, they don't they, they can't look in the eye, they're not gonna communicate, social awkward, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So yeah, that was the player we met at the rink. COVID comes. We, we go to these online things and everybody told us you're not going to be able to take special needs kids and do online stuff. 250 yeah. sessions later of which you facilitated 240 of. <laughs> yeah. I think we proved that wasn't right. But yeah. Naya came out of her shell. We started to hear her voice and what emerged was she would go last and she would always, and when we'd be with all these NHL players, we had NHL players, major league players, movie stuntmen, all, all these super cool. It guys. was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Super cool guys and girls. I have, I absolutely. You know, like the old hockey language comes out. Matt Kachuk um, was. There's many flames in there. Just yeah. for people to know. Uh, like you name it, it feels like we had them right. And yep. Barry Trotz, like all these. Anyways, it just sort of morphed that Naya asked the last question, and none of our kids asked hockey questions except for one. One player asked every player their plus minus. Logan. Yep. Yep. And I Everybody had to, I had to have homework. I had homework for every. That's every right. Because no right. players do it, right? Remember that? Oh, That's right. No, no, none of the players do it. And it was a kid, it was a guy with a really bad plus minus. Anyways, yeah. so it morphs and so Naya would ask questions, and, and Naya was always she would ask the question that she wanted to be asked. So it was an insight into her world and how she was thinking. You know, she asked Mitch Marner about you know the animal he'd like to be able to talk to, and he said cheetah. I know you go so fast. Yeah. And then he asked her, she goes a narwhal because no one knows why narwhals have horns, but a narwhal narwhal knows. And I want to ask a narwhal, like this is how she works and operates. Absolutely. So I, I forget the question she asked Emily, but it led to a story that Emily from when she was 12 years old posted on the wall. Her goal was to play in the Olympics and all the steps and all the people she needed to support her own way. And she'd see it every time she turned the light on, on and off. So it led to this story that was really empowering for our kids. But, but, you watched this friendship build between the two of them. And since then, like Emily's there for all of our kids, but then, then we talk about Naya and then we do things for Naya. So yesterday you and I were up in Edmonton, mm -hmm. superheroes. I had to deliver gifts from Emily to Naya. Yeah. And not surprisingly, then I now have to deliver gifts from Naya to Emily. Like they exchange yeah. gifts all the time. Um, Naya made flowered headbands for Emily and all of her teammates to wear in the bubble world championships. And that was, you know, all these teams have their call to action and their team thing. They wore their flowered headbands after every game and after they won. And they, the players were sending pictures to Naya with their medals and these flowers. Like when, when it, you know, and it, Emily and Sven are volunteers first and their hockey players second. Like none of, none of the special stuff they did happened because of how great they are at hockey. Yeah. It's because of how great they are as people. Yeah. And this is what volunteering does and brings out, you know, volunteers make guys like me look good, right? Yeah. Like we create the programs, but the volunteers create the magic and they go and do these things with these kids that change lives. I, I had it happen again yesterday. You don't even know this. You know, I got an email from one of the young men, you know, connected to Hitman players that live in Edmonton, skate yep. with our kids. I made yep. a connection with a kid now who he's never connected with anybody, but for some reason he fell in love with him. So volunteers have the ability I think in the old days, the idea was volunteers needed to come and change the world. We need volunteers to come and change one person's world. Yep. If everybody changes one person's world, we change the world. And volunteers can have a major, major impact if they want to. And all they have to do is bring them their genuine self. And I think Sven and Emily illustrate that, but guy or girl off the street who aren't high-level hockey players can have the same, if not greater, impact.